Hey troops, what's going on? Welcome to the channel Gen Day Commando. My name's Ryan, and as I'm sure you're all aware by now, I'm a former Royal Marines Commando. If you're not aware of that and you're brand new to this channel, then please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment below if you want to. But today, as promised, um, I put a, a question out on the um, on the community page the other day, um, you know, stating that we'll be doing a question and answers and to drop your questions below. And, you know, some of the top questions will be answered for you guys. And I thought this is just a, a nice little way of um, interacting with you guys in and around the 100k mark. We um, we reached that milestone a few days ago, which I'm really, really, really happy about. And I just want to say thank you guys. So I thought, let's do a bit of an interaction, question and answers. I was going to do this um, live as we speak, but I'm probably just going to do it pre-recorded so I can get the questions properly um and yeah you can drop comments below if you've got anything to add from that so let's get into it then troops so a few of the questions then um yeah my next video will be a questions and answer video drop your questions below so we've got 48 comments so far we only put it up 15 hours ago and we put a few posts after that so 48 comments will do guys what's the first one in fact we'll sort this by actually put the top comments first yeah see what the cry is with that so this one's by ace what was the biggest oh shit realizing you or someone else messed up badly moment you've ever had in the military oh man there's there's quite a few to be honest with you um oh i should have really read these before doing it troops anyway i'll speak from the heart what was the biggest oh shit moment for me um it was probably when i just completed the commando course I uh, just passed out, as they would say. I uh, got a 40 commando. I was, as they say, a sprog, which means a new guy um, at the unit. And before I knew it, before my feet had touched the ground, you know, before I could get fully integrated into unit life, we were packing our bags and we were off. We were off doing stuff. And I was away um, off camp for like months on end. I can't remember where we went now, but we went somewhere. It might have been America um for pre-operation cougar training and um after about eight weeks there because i went there earlier to do something to do basically they sent me to america to do a driving qualification but i didn't have my heavy goods license so it was two weeks of just mincing about in the mojave desert so it was pretty cool but i wasn't there for the original reason i should have been but anyway that's a different story guys and i was away for eight weeks and when i came back i realized that my car was illegally parked now, the guy on camp, the G1 advisor, and the person who is actually in charge of the cars at the time, I can't remember his specific role, but he was a warrant officer or, or a staff, a, a, a color sergeant, I think, actually. And um, I went down to company lines and my name was on the board. I had to go see this guy. I was like, oh, God, I'm in the crap. And then all of the messages started coming through on my phone, voicemails and stuff that I never got before. That I couldn't answer because I was away. And when I went up to this office, I was I was absolutely shitting myself, guys, because it was the first probable bit of trouble that I was going to get into in the military, okay? And it's different at a unit. It's a man's world, all right? And if you mess up there, you know, you're going to be messing up with a man who can probably kick your ass, you know? And I was a young lad at the time, and uh, I was petrified. And I thought, oh, God. And I went into his office, and before I could... <sighs> Before I could even begin to explain why I hadn't answered his phone calls and I was ignoring him and my car had been illegally parked on camp for about nine weeks, um, he ripped me a new arsehole. He absolutely tore me to shreds. And he really, really, really did as well. I was like, oh my goodness, this is not a good start, this, you know. That was probably one of the biggest door shit moments for me. And um, yeah, I got thrashed off him. I ended up having to push my car which was a thrashing in itself with my best friend um, in the Marines. I'm not going to mention his name for privacy reasons, but he was called the Ginger Hulk. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he started going off with me because he had to push my car as well, and he had nothing to do with it. And long story short, the same guy who thrashed me ended up buying the car off me, so we became actually quite pally. So I got thrashed off the guy, petrified of him, and then I sold him the car, became friends with him. So that's the Marines. It's a funny old world, guys. But that was the biggest oh shit moment for me to start with. There's plenty, plenty more oh shit moments, guys. But uh, I'd need a full video for that. Good question, Ace. So we got uh, Hawk Entertainment. 
How the F do you grow such a good beard? Real question. Do you have a life lesson? Um, do you have any life lessons or important information that can share to people that want to join the military? So I'll answer the first question. Uh, the beard is genetics and just being, as we say in the military, or rather the Marines, Harry Von Espatz. If you don't know what Harry Von Espatz is, comment below. Someone might tell you or do a bit of Google research, yeah? But yeah, put that down to genetics, good beard oil, and um, yeah, just look, really. <laughs> good question. Real. Now, the real question, do you have any life lessons, important information that you can share to people that want to join the military? That's a really good question, that. Um, yeah, so don't, don't allow life to define you, allow life to refine you instead. If you get defined by life, um, you know, like so many people from the likes of where I come from, you'll fall into the same old routine as your family, your, your parents, your forefathers, your generations before you, and you'll just crack on as normal. You're doing the same old stuff. And you'll not really get anything new from that. You'll have the same the same experiences, probably, and you'll have the same output. You put in the same input, you have the same output. Don't be defined by your life in its current state. So I grew up, there was not much opportunities my way. Um, there was not a lot of money and stuff like that. And I just chipped away. I got into a bit of trouble when I was younger, but I, you know, I, I tried to allow life to refine us instead. So I went into the Marines um second time around and managed to get through it just allowed the process to do its work on me okay and get rid of the bad bits and you know refine the good bits and make me into the person i am today which is a motivated individual trying to just crack on through life and one of the most important bits of information that was never told to me that i've only really only really in this believe it or not past year figured out is to genuinely not give a shit about what anyone thinks, all right? You really have to listen to that. That's the most important one. Genuinely don't care what people think. Now, I'm not saying go around being uh, and be an anarchist, and be like, oh, I don't care what anyone thinks I'm doing and what I want to do. I'm not saying that. Don't be afraid to try positive things, to try positive stuff, to give things a go. Um, even though it might sound a little bit far-fetched or a little bit tough or a little bit, well, you can't do that. Give it a go. Don't care what people think. Reap the rewards. And when you've completed it, you'll actually, you'll have overcome that obstacle of caring what people think. Because believe it or not, most of my life, I've actually lived like that. I've, um, my next move has been determined on, on what this person might think or what this group of people might think, what my family might think what my friends might think and I worried all of that you know and I actually it was, it was one of the main things that um has helped me do this YouTube channel with my mindset a year ago um I wouldn't have been able to start a YouTube channel believe it or not quite a confident person to the camera but behind the scenes quite a quite a shy individual not many people know that I'm quite shy um and I do think about public opinion an awful lot probably is a bit too much in this past year I've just thought F it screw it who cares what people think? Just give it a go, and it's paid off. That's the number one thing in life, guys, that's helped me out. So that's what I would say to you guys. Don't care what people think. Just give it a go. Lion Hypex. What a name. What was the hardest moment you had to go through while in the military? Oh, man, that's a good question as well. Hardest moment for me? Oh, I don't know. Hardest moment. I was going to say recruit training, but recruit training, when I look back, is... Although it was the hardest thing at the time, it is the best thing I've went through, um, you know, and I'm really, really grateful for that. So the hardest thing for me was probably accepting that in order to pursue things that I wanted to pursue and in order for me to maintain what I already had, which was a wife, we wanted to settle down, have a family. I knew that, uh, although I probably didn't want to fully, you know, pretty soon after getting married, I would uh, be leaving the military and starting new things, whether or not it would be in my favor or not, because the military was a major part of my life. It was uh, a thing that I was proud of. The one thing that I was actually ex extremely proud of telling people that I was, you know, I felt part belonging. The friends I had there um, were second to none and the experiences were fantastic. But I knew it would be short lived after I got married, not just because of the marriage, but because 
you know, I wanted that to last as well. You know, I didn't marry the military, I married my wife and I just wanted longevity and I wanted to enjoy my life on earth with uh, with her and to start a family, which I've got now and I'm very grateful of. So the hardest moment for me was actually having to accept that I'm going to be leaving the military, you know, on a full time basis anyway, if that answers your question. So very, very good question. That. Thank you very much, guys. Change of scenery. Norman has hey, Norman has a good friend of mine on YouTube. If it wasn't for YouTube, I wouldn't have even even met no man has virtually so um thanks for your question buddy how are we going to celebrate your one year anniversary on youtube live reaction stream with the boys you know what yeah the 15th i think it's the 15th of april we are we are literally one year into youtube with over 100k subs i can't believe it which is crazy you know if someone told me a year ago would you have 100,000 subscribers i would have said yes you know, because I told many people, I told my mum and dad I'd have 100,000 subscribers and it, I made it happen. So if there's a little bit of advice in that, guys, do, you know, if you if you project your mind into something, you can uh, manifest that thought pattern. Thoughts do become things. I'm a massive believer in that. If anyone is here has heard of the bodybuilder called Kai Green, now he's a big um, believer in thoughts become things and manifestation of thought pattern and he's pretty much where I've learned that whole philosophy from so um, for me yeah I knew I was going to hit 100,000 subscribers it was a mentality I had and I will be celebrating one year anniversary on YouTube with a live stream with the geezers probably play some Warzone actually um, which other one have we got here uh, da, 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 da. Max, when did you join the Marines and what was your motivation? Um, I originally joined the Royal Marines. I signed up for the Royal Marines in year 11 at school or year 10. I was like 15 and 10, 11 months, um, 2004, 5-ish. And yeah, I originally went in then. A little bit too young, a little bit naive, extremely fit and motivated, but... I wasn't prepared um, mentally for what life could throw at you. So a few things happened in life which affected me um, on, a, on an array of different levels, you know, which, you know, eventually led to me not actually making it through the Royal Marines Commando training course first time round, although I was very close to getting that Green Beret. You know, it um, it just wasn't meant to be until I rejoined the Royal Marines in my early 20s, about six, seven years later. So, yeah, my motivation, believe it or not, was influence. Everything you do, I believe, you are influenced to do. Now, I grew up um, watching war movies and stuff like that. I grew up uh, boxing. I was in the, I was in a, you know, an, an aggressive kind of sport and con combat sport type thing. That was my life. So it was just a natural transition, really, to do something that I could use my physicality and my mental resilience to be able to earn some money. And I wanted to earn the Green Beret. I wanted to see if I had what it takes, you know. They sold it as, have you got what it takes? 99% need not apply. And um, I was sold that ticket and I bought it, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I took it for the challenge, Is um, in short. What was my favourite food? All of it. All of it. I'm, a fan. I'm just a food fan. If you can tell, I, I grew this beard to cover my chin. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love all food. My, my favourite, believe it or not, eh, well, actually, most of you won't be surprised. It's probably Indian food. My wife is of Indian origin. She's from Mauritius, but she's a Tamil. Um, and she cooks some wonderful, wonderful Indian-style food. So I've got to say Indian. So Book Davies, which MRE or Combat Ration was your favourite? Oh, man, this is a... This is a good one. Um, so believe it or not, right, the, the British rations, although lads will drip and drip and drip some more, the British rations are really, really good. Much better now than they used to be. Um, but when you go to other countries and you try what they've got, man, the British rations are really nice, I think. And the wholesome, you know, if you want a wholesome kind of meal when you're in the field, you're cold, wet and miserable. And you've got like, I don't know, You've got like, I don't know, spaghetti bolognese or you've, you know, your, your, your homemade British meals. The British ones are nice. However, when we went to America or whenever I've worked alongside the Americans, we tend to always have MREs, meals ready to eat. Um, and the American MREs, uh, it's almost like it's almost like a takeaway, like takeaway food for us. 
So the good, and it was good for a short period of time. I enjoyed it because it was, it was something very, very different, almost fast foodish, you know. But you wouldn't really be able to survive as well, I didn't think, if you were to eat that type of food in British climate. So if you were on Dartmoor for a week or two in the United Kingdom, you'd want to have British rations just because they seem like the more wholesome. But yeah, the the best ones actually are the British ones. But let me know below, guys, what your uh, take on that is. Are they the best? Have you tried British rations? Let me know. E Euphoria. All right, what's this one? I'm turning 24 and living on my own. Um, I'm planning on joining the US Army to become a ranger. Okay, so a ranger's pretty, pretty tough thing to be. And my question is. How did you find time to serve and also create a family at the same time? How do you balance your time slash life? I want to find a good woman and have kids two down the road, but I feel that I will. Um, it will be hard if I'm going to be in the military. And yeah, you know, there's no easy way to say it. It is hard if you're in the military. It's tough. You are not just a tough, resilient individual if you make it through Army Ranger training. You also need to have someone who's equally tough at home if they're not they'll not stay there very long so the question is you'll need to find someone who's got a similar kind of mentality as you that's the first thing be compatible with someone allow them to understand exactly what your goals are be completely transparent with them about what you aim to achieve and give them a time frame most lads who join the military do all of those things first that I've mentioned, but they don't give people time frames. If you don't give people time frames, one, you're being a little selfish because their life's almost on hold. And two, you give someone a time frame, it gives you something to work towards and it also gives them light at the end of the tunnel. You know, if you say you're going to be aware for the rest of your life, then, you know, it is a little bit jack on that person. Um, I give my wife a timeline. I went over it by about a year, but you know, I give her a timeline and I was out, I was, I lived through it and I don't regret a single thing, you know, so she stuck by me, you know, and when we ended up having children at the end of the military, it's all worked out hunky dory guys. So yeah, be realistic, find someone who's compatible and give a timeline, you know, don't say to them, I'm going to do 40 years or something, you know, if you, if you want to do 40 years, then you, you can't really plan for families. You just got to let life take its take its natural course and see what falls in place but if you actually want to plan then that's my advice i hope that answers your question my friend view gaming when are you coming to sweden and if you do would you like to hang out with the swedish members by any chance 100 percent, mate so i did a lot of traveling before the c word um hit the whole world and sweden was actually on the list but we never actually made it there because of the obvious but yeah, been all over Europe. I love the place and I'll definitely, definitely be visiting Sweden at some point, my friend. Um, Patnik, in your train, what is the toughest lesson that you've learned which helped you when you were in service? Oh, that's a tough one, that. Toughest lesson. Right, so the... This this is probably not, not a lesson, tough lesson that I've learned, but I've seen other lads have to pay the price for. In the military, there's a thing in the Marines called being jack. If you if you jack to someone, it means you've you've quit. You haven't tried your all. Um, don't be jack to people. Help them when you can. And there's nothing worse, especially in the military, more specifically the Royal Marines, where you'll be that guy who will help someone when someone's watching, just to get brownie points. But you'll not be there to help them when no one's watching. You'll rap on them. You'll jack. Does that make sense? No one likes them people and they get found out. Maybe he's not in training straight away, but at unit, you've basically shown your colours. And if you are like that, people won't like you. And if you're not liked in the military, it's for a bloody reason. It's because this person can't rely on you. And if it's a matter of life and death, which, you know, doesn't happen too often in the military these days, but you want to be that guy who the person left and right of you can look at and go, He's got my back no matter what. He's not just a person who's going to do the right thing when someone's watching. He's going to do the right thing when someone isn't, which is more important. So that was probably one of the one of the toughest lessons I've seen, but not necessarily had to learn myself because I just tried my best not to be Jack. We're all like that to a degree at times, but that's the toughest lesson people learn, guys. 
What is your favourite weapon platform and why? All oh, right, okay. So the AK-47 is a fun weapon system to use. It's a fun variant. It's it's actually it's underrated a little bit in terms of its its overall ability. I think it you know if you get a well-made AK variant the with with with, with sights and stuff on it, it's a real good weapon system. But more fun, if that makes sense. I had more fun using one of those things. But for me, it has to be the light machine gun. Now, many people think I'd say the GPMG, the general purpose machine gun. But look, my favorite weapon system is, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a few things here. One, how light is it? It's maneuverability. It's effect. So is it effective at what it does? and what kind of role can it be in now the light machine gun or the american version is a saw i believe um is a 556 five, variant you know the, the the rounds uh are not the not the biggest out there but they're going to kill you if it hits you you know they're going to see severely wound you at, at work at, at best and uh you can get a heavy rate of fire down um from quite a far distance so it can be a fire support weapon system you could be bounding across enemy positions with a section in a section attack going straight towards the enemy you could be clearing a room in urban conflicts so it's very very adaptable it works pretty well and you can get a heavy rate of fire down which makes you feel really safe now that being said the general purpose machine gun if one of those things is firing at you in a section of men who know exactly what they're doing with it then that thing's scary as hell, but it's not as light, it's not as versatile, and you wouldn't want to go into a room trying to clear it, because you'd probably kill everything, including oxygen. So, yeah, just uh, the, the LMG for me. Right, got another one here. Uh, da, 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 da. Kaiser Washington, have you ever thought about doing more collabs with other people, like Original Human, Combat Arms, Bootneck Gamer, or even other people? So, yes, I have. I've got actually quite a few ideas, guys, above and beyond this channel. So this is a reaction channel. I react to military-based content. Sometimes go a little bit left of that, a little bit right of that. But it's a reaction channel. Now, I want to keep on building this, but, you know, you guys see my personality and you hear um, my thought pattern through my reactions. But I want to do something. The, the main reason I got onto YouTube is because for years and years, I've always wanted to do um videos orientated around a vlog all right video, video video log on my life and the things i get up to because i get up to quite a lot of interesting things now my journey back into the royal marines i want to kind of track that i wished i'd tracked it when i was in the military i want to track my fitness i want to track my training i want to track the behind the scenes stuff give a more personal kind of view of my life all right um but i haven't really at this moment in time gotten around to doing it properly they've got quite a lot going on so collabs yes different kind of content 100 percent building a different channel obviously i've got the gaming channel which i'm going to be building anywhere because we love to game that's a pastime though but I want to want to get some proper content out where I can actually show you a little bit of my editing skills and stuff like that, because that's a bit of a passion of mine, all right? Actually working and creating content of my own. Um, but collabs with Original Human Combat Arms, yes, I would love to do a lot more stuff with them, guys. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be on YouTube anywhere, especially Original Human. He was one of the first, he is the first person I ever mentioned, um, ever, ever kind of, well, he put me on to how to actually create a channel and stuff. And his channel's massive now. Combat Arms is a good friend. Bootneck Gamer is a, you know, he's, he's he's got a great channel himself as well. So I'd love to do some collabs with these guys. Bootneck Gamer will probably be the guy I'll be collabing with on the gameplay, actually. So, yeah, definitely, guys, definitely. Um, Are you going to do any more Snack Reaction videos? That was great. We were placing bets on what Snack you would like the best. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to start sending me stuff, but I need to get a PO box for that, really. Um, I'll do some more of them videos, guys. I was actually thinking about doing some stuff like LA Beast. Have you seen LA Beast where he does the uh, food challenges? If you want to see me do food challenges like the hottest chilies and stuff like that, maybe I can put that on the other channel because I've, I've always wanted to do that just because I'm a bit sadistic. And, yeah, I think it would be good fun for you guys to laugh at me. Um, what else have we got? What else have we got? 
Right, so Mandy Story, do you do tours? And if you do, how long do they last? So yes, you do do tours in the military. They're drastically different now to 10 plus years ago. Um, Afghanistan's closed down pretty much now, although you can go out there if you do specific jobs, such as close protection and things like that in the military police or the Marines police or the RAF police. Um, but normally the Royal Marines are, are, are kind of locked into a cycle called Operation Cougar, which happens every single year. It's around the Mediterranean and the Middle East doing counter piracy and short term training teams. All right. And that lasts from anything six to nine months, guys. OK, so you do loads of different things. Um, how do you feel about women going into combat and why? Right, so Liana Katzborn, that's a that's a good question. Don't like to get too political on the channel. If I do, I like to keep a neutral stance on it. But here's my take on it. Regardless of what I think, it's happening right now. Regardless of what I think, they're integrating right now. Regardless of what I believe, it's not going to change anything in the future. However, you know, fair play for the passing. But I do think just from... And, and, and you've got to look at this from a compassionate level. Me speaking compassionately towards women, I think we are the protectors of women. We should we should protect women at all costs. We should look after them, keep them under our wing and, and, and let them thrive in their own capacities in, um, in a more peaceful way. I think it's bad enough guys going into combat. I'm not really for war, believe it or not. Not many military guys are. Um, and women just adds to the problem, um, not in a way that they add to a problem for being a woman, but it just, we've already got men going to war, that's bad enough, why Why send women? Um, I don't agree with it for that reason alone, you know, I would hate to think that my daughter would go to war in the future, um, I think it's bad enough for guys, but you know, if they pass the test and they're good enough, then fair play, they've earned the place. Matthew Green, have you ever had any memories, um, where the mortar didn't go off right. No, I haven't had any moments where the mortar didn't go off right. Actually, I've seen plenty and I've heard one or two, but now nah, pretty much there, you know, normally user error or the barrel hasn't been cleaned properly. It's normally bad drills and laziness. But yeah, in the military, especially in the Marines, never heard of it really. Um, he's a good one. Eclipse Games. If you were ever to join another service behind, uh, besides the Marines, which one would it be and why? Without question, I'll answer this straight away, the Parachute Regiment in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, we work alongside each other actually quite a lot. The bravado and the banter and the back and forth and the hatred is not actually what you think it is, believe it or not. It's, um, you know, we actually get on like a house on fire. There's a bit of banter, professional banter, but actually I've had more kind of stick. I've had more kind of nitpicking off crap regiments and i'm not going to name any but some of the infantry units and uh, some of the infantry regiments out in the army some of the, the lesser ones will try and take the piss a little bit more so um actually the paris and marines we tend to look after each other because we know we're the best in the british military it's simple as that which the two hardest courses in the british military for tier two um tier two operatives it's as simple as that and the tier one dogs are the ses and the sbs simple as that guys we know our place we don't pretend to be anything bigger or smaller um and it would be the parachute regiment without question fantastic bunch of guys uh da, 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 da. what else i'm gonna do one more one more one more one more some good quizzes here Right, here's a question. So, what the F does Gen Dit and Gen Dit Commando stand for? Now, 100,000 people uh, subscribe to the channel now. Not a lot of you know what Gen Dit stands for. Many people think that Gen is short for general, but it's not. Gen is just basically in the in the Marines, in the military now. It's, um, it, it's, it means true, it means real, genuine. Dit means story. So, if I say spin is a, spin is a dit, that means tell us a story. Um, is that dit gen? Is that a gen dit? Is, is, that means is that a true story? Um, so yeah, true story commando. Genuine story commando. It's about me being real, talking about you know experiences, reacting to things, and being truthful about it, telling a story and commando because I was a commando. I am a commando. All right, guys. So hopefully that clears it up. 
but we're at 30 minutes now wow i think we should do i think we should do a few more of these type of videos actually troops because um there's loads of questions come out and um i've missed a few of those questions off there as well but if you do have anything you want to ask me just drop them below and i'll start doing little videos like this to give you guys a little bit of feedback from your questions because you know i can comment all i want sometimes it takes too long but i think a video is more appropriate but if you've got anything else you want to ask me drop a comment below i'm still waiting on doing the 100k subs um the 100 k subscriber special kind of video because i'm waiting out to see if i'm actually eligible to get the um silver play button from youtube because not every channel is believe it or not you've got to go through various different um eligibility tests and stuff like that which i'm currently undergoing so hopefully i make the grid and i can get it i'd be very very grateful of that but if you're still here by now thanks for stopping by smash that like share and subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video troops peace